Okay, I'm going to be working some chapter 3 review A problems with you. So I want you to have your textbook open to this page and have your notebook out and have your pencil out and um, try and do these problems alongside me. So when I read out the question, um, don't just watch me work it out. You might want to pause the video and try to do it yourself or you might want to let me work one and then do the next one um, in these where we have like actual uh similar problems. These first ones are, are like questions and definitions. So anyway, um, just make sure that you're doing some of the work with me. If we have to turn back and find an answer, you turn back with your book too and you circle that area where we found a, an answer to our question and that sort of thing so that um, your mind is exercising on this too. Okay, so the first question, what property of arithmetic states that the order of add-ins can be changed without affecting the answer? Now, if you read that and you're wondering, oh, it's been a long time since I've seen that word add-ins and you don't know what it means, there's a place in the back of your book. Um, it's called the glossary and it's all alphabetical order. Um, you can look up the definition of add-in. It's a number being combined in an addition problem. So something like, um, something like uh, two plus two, the add-in there's two add-ins in that problem. It's that and it's that. You know, so it's just the, the numbers in the the numbers in the problem. Um, in an addition problem. So um, what's the rule though? So they want to know what's the rule um, that says that the order can be changed around and it won't mess up the answer. So I could say um, three plus two or 2 plus 3, and either one of them is going to equal 5. We know that, but they, they've named this rule. So they want to know the name of the rule. Let's give them the name of the rule. Um, yeah, I don't even, I didn't know these till I had to study these up. So um, the first one, they're really good. They're going to write things that you're going to need to remember in bold. So it's really easy to look back. And this is the beginning of chapter 1. So their questions kind of seem to build from the beginning, um, I think. So anyway, um, commutative property, let's, let's read and see if this is the one, of addition and multiplication, so it can apply to either one of those. It states that the order of add-ins, which is for addition, and factors, which is for multiplication, uh, the order can be reversed without affecting, okay, that's the one that we want. Um, now, how are we gonna remember this? Um, if you've ever heard of somebody when they say they're, they're going to work and they have to commute to work, the word commute means like go. So let's just think of it like, look, they drew the movers here. So let's just think of it like this. Um, you can have four plus three or you can have three plus four. You can make them commute and go move, move places. So just, I don't know, whatever helps your mind remember it when you need it, because you might get asked that. Um, so commute, commutative is our answer. Commute. So just remember the commute. Um, all right, the next question is, let me find my spot. Well, that's not, we're not there yet. Okay, the next question is the associative property uh, cannot be applied to which of the following operations? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. Okay, let's look back. We know what property we need to look at now. We could look in our glossary. Um, I haven't tried that, but I'm just going to go back to where they explain it, where I can look at some examples. Um, the regrouping can be done within expressions containing two or more addition or multiplication. So it's not, look, subtraction, division are not associative. So you can reassociate them. Just think of it like um, maybe like like uh, people in a, in a group. Who do they associate with? The four and the three are talking and they're leaving the two out. Or um, you can switch it up and let the four be left out and the three and the two are talking. Either way you do that, you can just add what's in here, seven plus two. It's gonna equal nine, okay? Fine, we can add this one up first and do five plus four. That's gonna equal nine too, so it didn't change it. Multiplication, it's not gonna change it. Um, the multiplication and, and addition are kind of related because they're about increasing things. So they seem to share some of the rules and they kind of leave subtraction and division out. So your answer to that problem is gonna be um, 
I said the associative property cannot be applied to which ones? Well, it's subtraction and division. So two, subtraction, I'm gonna write it just smaller and move on, not waste time. <laughs> Uh, three, direction on the number line is indicated by two symbols. What symbol means to the left? Okay, uh, well, if you have a number line, um, that's your positive up there. That's your negative. Sorry. So to the left is going to be negative. So number three, negative. Okay, four, what is the reference point on the number line? What's that middle? I drew it right there. That reference point where you start counting up from it is, you should know that, that is zero. Count up, positive one, two, three, four, and count down. Negative one, two, three, four, goes on and on and on. What can be described as adding the opposite? So I wrote down page 104. I've already looked over some of these. Um, so adding the opposite, just think about what that's meaning. You might want to pause the video and look back yourself at page 104 and see if you can find it on there. Okay. So I found that, here we go, in fact, subtraction can be defined as adding the opposite. So maybe we had zero and we want to add the opposite of seven, which in other words, we're just subtracting seven, but it... Um, there is a way in math we can start to think of everything as adding. See, look, they wrote it like this, plus negative 7. You will, like, see in these problems, they'll be like 5 minus positive 2 can also be written as 5 plus negative 2. That one would, uh, once you work, uh, bring it out of the parentheses, the negative will apply to the 2. It's just, it's, it's just getting you ready for um, more complicated problems, I guess. And there you have it, or this one. By the time you take it out of, out of there, you're gonna have it too. So it's just preparing you. So just know that, um, so technically now I guess maybe that's, uh, that, that would be your answer. Subtraction can be defined. So go back to your questions. Um, they want to know what can uh, uh, what is described. So write subtraction for answer for number four. Okay. I wrote that one all the way out this time. Okay. So number five. Um, wait, that was number five. Oh, I didn't even write down four. The reference point is zero. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, maybe you already did that though. Um, you were paying attention. Okay, six, what term describes two numbers with the same absolute value, but opposite signs? Okay, so absolute value, you may want to look back in your glossary if you can't remember what that is. Um, absolute value would be like if you had a negative three, the absolute just number value of it is three, and then we'll think about what sign it has later. The distance of any, oh yeah, that's a better way to put it. The distance of any number from zero. So right now we're not even thinking about if we had to go to the left or to the right. We're just wondering what distance is it. So is it negative three? Its absolute value is still three. Positive three? It's still three. Um, so our question, I've got to start marking my place here so I don't do this flipping back as much. Um, okay. What term describes numbers with the same absolute value but opposite signs. So I wrote page 106. I'm going to put this here to mark my place. Page 106. Um, what term describes two numbers with the same but opposite signs? Okay, there's the only bold thing, well, besides Kelvin that I'm seeing on this page, is this. These are two numbers with the same absolute value. But look, they put the answers there for us. We just got to go find them. So your answer is additive inverses. So um, if I were to, let's write that, additive inverses. So if I were to ask you, okay, well, what's the additive inverse of, um, of positive 5? And you'd be like, well, it's just the same absolute value. 
<clears throat> but with a different sign. That would be the answer. That's the ad these are additive inverses of each other. Okay. Um, the next question, number seven, is what is the sum of two add-ins, we know what that means, with the same absolute value but opposite signs? Ooh, so the sum means when you put them together with the same absolute value. Okay, let's, let's use five again. Uh, same absolute value, so this is, one's going to be here, and it's going to be added to another one. So we're going to use 5. Let's use positive 5 plus negative 5. We want to know what they equal, okay, when we put them together. Um, well, bring this one out. I'm just going to write it plain, since that always means. And then when I bring this one out, it's going to be negative 5. So you basically got 5 minus 5. Well, that's 0. Okay? Now, well, we can do it here if you would like to look at it on a number line. Um, here's uh, 0 right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's just write 6 on there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We'll just pretend like it keeps going. <clears throat> so we have positive 5. One, two, three, four, five. We got here. Oh, but then it said minus five. So we went one, two, three, four, five, minus one, two, three, four, five, back where we started at zero. So you can draw yourself a picture if that helps you. Um, but once you get good at it, you just, that's what happens when you put two additive inverses together. Okay, um, now after we've done those word problems, we will do 3.1.